My name is Michael Elowitz. I'm an investigator at Howard Hughes Medical Institute and a professor of biology and biological engineering at Caltech. I think the first thing is just, you know, that really the sort of the, the whole idea of programming cells. If you think about a cell, it's just this like squishy little thing and it looks like a big mess. It's unpredictable, it's fragile. But on the other hand, it has this ability to grow and develop into a complex organism, form bones and brains and blood. And um, it's just an amazing question of how is it that you can uh, have this little thing that, that has this amazing power and precision at the end of the day. And it was not designed by humans. It was designed through this alien process of evolution. So it's not something that we have a, a user manual to understand. And so the amazing thing to me is just the idea that we can actually understand these biological programs and that we can understand them well enough to start to write our own programs in the cell and program cells to do something new that they've never done before. And I think for me, that's always been kind of the North Star, the thing that I, to me, I just feel like is such a, a beautiful idea and an exciting idea that um, I just love it. The idea has been, well, maybe, or the dream has been, maybe we could start to program cells that would also provide therapeutic functions, but we could do it in a more rational and programmable way and um, that would be kind of incredible. And I think right now is kind of an amazing moment for that. I mean, a lot of these foundations are now kind of paying off where we can start to build systems that really do kind of detect and respond to disease states or, or, or improve therapies. You know, uh, one recent example is, you know, there's a, a devastating disease called Red Syndrome, genetic disease. And people like Huda Zogby, Adrian Bird, and others have shown that it's a mutation in a gene, MECP2. And if you could supply that gene, you re replace it, you can in principle cure the disease. But they've also shown that too much of that, too much expression of the same gene is bad. So you have to get it, you know, just, just right. And this is the kind of thing that biological circuits do so well. And so we've, for example, recently taken a simple biological circuit and shown that, you know, just adding it to a gene therapy can keep the level of expression of a protein constant, irrespective of all of the things that are hard to control in a gene therapy. You know, in other work, we're, we're developing systems that can export RNA from cells and turn cells into delivery vehicles that can bring mRNA to other cells, um, building like circuits of proteins that can sense the states of cells and then trigger responses. The paradoxical aspect of it all is that you've got to be, on the one hand, relentlessly, brutally skeptical and critical of everything. And that's because there's so many ways in science that you can fool yourself or you can find artifacts. And there's constantly ways to get it wrong. But you have to somehow do that. That's critical and essential. But also stay open and receptive and attuned enough to recognize the weird thing that is, in fact, a new discovery. And that, because that, that does happen. And it's like, if you're simply are just relentlessly critical all the time, and you don't sort of maintain that openness, you can miss the big moments. And I think the other thing that's really vitally important in science is communication. So we're now in an environment where there's just an endless blizzard of papers, discoveries, results, you know, you see it everywhere. And we're all kind of drowning in, in, in all of this in some way. And so figuring out how to explain why why something's really interesting, what it means, and why anybody should care about it. That's like really vitally important. And, and it's not easy to do that in, in this environment. Um, and the other thing I would say about it is, you know, I find more and more that the ability to communicate science, it's not just to tell other people what's going on, it's actually so you can understand it yourself. And the last thing I guess is just human skills. You know, we're almost always working in a team environment with lots of other people, and that can be, amazing or it can go terribly wrong. <laughs> and so a lot depends on your ability to work with other people. And um, I think, yeah, the more you can do that, the better. So. In biology, in, syn in synthetic biology, and really in science more generally, the universe is weird. 
the way biology works is weird. It's not intuitive to us. It's so strange. And the fact that you can have an opportunity to really try to puzzle out how these systems work and figure it out. And even like for synthetic biology, even reprogram such a weird system is just a, a phenomenal opportunity. And I just feel that uh, we're fortunate that I think as a, as a society, at least in many places, that's valued enough to allow us to do this incredibly fun, challenging, exciting activity as a, as a career. And um, I would say my advice is just to value that amazing opportunity to make the most of it, try to keep it real and remember that that's the real thing that, that actually matters and that experiencing that click in perception, something suddenly makes sense that seemed baffling before is, is an amazing pleasure that is just make the most of that opportunity to experience that.